Hello and welcome to the Cisco DevNet channel. In our earlier videos, we saw how to access and use some of the Secure Access APIs. In today's video, we will see what an implementation of these APIs look like together with Yaron Kaspi, API Product Manager at Cisco. Hi, Yaron. Hi, Alexei. Thank you for having me. And yeah, just like you said, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh some of those apis and put them to practice we're going to see how we actually use them in our own application for spark so let me go ahead and share my screen all right and what we're looking at right now uh, is a uh, splunk base splunk place is a uh, splunk's marketplace it's basically uh, where you would publish your add-ons or applications for Splunk. We have, we have both. Um, today, we're going to look at the cloud security application for Splunk. As you can see, it's compatible with both Splunk Enterprise and Splunk Cloud. So you can install this uh, either from here if you're using Splunk Enterprise or uh, if you're using Splunk Cloud, like uh, in this instance, um, then you can see that just looking for Cisco Cloud Security will bring both the Cloud Security application for Splunk and the Cloud Security add-on for Splunk, both of these. This one happens to be already installed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Install. It's going to ask me for my Splunk credentials. Just bear with me while I plug those in. There we go. And it's going to go ahead and install the app. So, so it's official application from your product team for Secure Access and Umbrella. Um, instead of that, uh, there is uh, some community-supported application uh, that works with Umbrella or works with Secure Access. Am I right? There are. There are. But uh, with varying levels of functionality and, of, of course, without support, um, these two packages, both the app and the add-on are, are, yes, they're official packages, so they are supported. All right. Um, by the way, the message around the restart is uh, something that we'll fix in future versions. It doesn't really require a restart. It's more of a, uh, call it a, uh, um, a non-functional requirement. It's primarily in order to show or render uh, the logos, but those aren't the main part. So now I can go to, oh, let me just refresh my screen after the install, but now I should be able to select the Cisco Cloud Security application for Splunk. And this is going to take me right into the setup. So it's taking me to the application settings. Location settings include a number of different elements. You don't have to configure all of them. You can configure just the ones that you need. Um, the ones that we specifically need right now are either the secure access or umbrella API credentials, right? So our URL is going to be pretty much the same in both cases. So HTTPS api.ssc.cisco.com. That's pretty straightforward. But now, as you can see, I'm going to need my API key and I'm going to need my API secret. So let's go into secure access and let's create a new API key. We'll call this my Splunk key. We can put in a description. Now, um, each API credential, as we saw before, um, is limited to this access scopes that you provide for it. So what do we actually need here in terms of access scopes? We need a few things. Uh, for our dashboards, we need elements from reports like aggregations. Notice I'm only selecting read only. I don't need anything beyond them. I need app discovery. For app discovery, I need read and write. Why? Because in the app, you can also change uh, an application label or tag. Okay. Um, I think that's all I need for reports. Uh, yeah, pretty much. And then from policies, I'm going to need uh, two things. I'm going to need destination lists and destinations. And I want read write for both. And I need these because 
Um, from the app, you can also add destinations like domains, URLs, or IPs into these lists. And then I need one other thing. Oh, I also need uh, private resources. And then I need one other thing from investigate. I'm going to select the bulk and the investigate access scopes. I need these in order to um, perform enrichment actions from the app that we're that we just installed, right? Um, I can set an expiration date. I can set network restrictions. I'm not going to do that right now. But when I hit create, um, we're going to get our new API key. And in the API key, we're going to get the key and the secret. Please note, the secret's only shown once when you generate this. If you forget it later on, you can refresh. But each one is shown only once. So I'm going to copy my API key. I'm going to put it in here. Then I'm going to copy my key secret. And I'm going to put that in my key secret. Great. Then I can select my time zone. So I can say, OK, where am I? And this is really important so that all of your dashboards and your reports are showing you your relative time zone. So I can pick anything uh, out of this list doesn't really matter. And then I can select my storage region. Now, in most cases, you can select default. But if you are like me in EMEA and your data center is in the US, then I need to explicitly select the US. I can then select my index for the investigate API requests. And I can select my settings for the app discovery index first. So all I need to do here is basically just tell it which index to go to. If you want, you can also change the polling interval for the API over here. All right, we've done that. Then we're going to do the same thing for the uh, private resources. So your private apps, basically. Select the index. All right, we're done. And one last thing, we go all the way down to save. All right. Um, and once you've hit save, by the way, this destination list panel becomes live. So now what I can do is I can see which destination list I have by clicking on uh, fetch destination list. So this is an API request to get my destination lists. And then I can determine uh, which roles inside of Splunk can control them. So there are uh, three roles that the app creates upon installation. There's CS admin, CS supervisor, and CS user. CS user is primarily uh, limited to looking at the dashboards. They can't actually make changes like sending destinations to these destination lists. But a CS admin and a CS supervisor can. And you can see we've broken these down so that if you want some only to be available to the admin, you can do that while you could have others that are only available for the um, CS supervisor role. OK, so you add these. One last thing I'm going to do, I don't need to set the cloud lock settings unless I really want them. But one other thing that's worth doing is the log settings here allow you to basically go into detailed um, dashboards um, that are based on data coming in from the add-on, if you have that running. In my case, I do, and I kind of want to show you the drill down. So I've just selected them, hit Save, and that's it. From this point onwards, you can see, by the way, that I have configured my application settings. And from this point onwards, I can start uh, getting the data. So if I click on monitor right now, it's going to take me to the first set of dashboards. And it's going to make these API requests. In the background, that's what it's doing. So it's bringing back information, um, in this case, DNS or, or, or proxy or firewall information right from those APIs. OK? Now, one other thing. We talked about app discovery. In app discovery, it's going to make those API requests again. 
All right, so I have a bunch of applications. And then for each application, like this one, I can get the details. That's a subsequent API request. I can get, for example, the identities that access the application. Another thing I can do is I can actually update the label, like I said, right? And that's another API request that's going back and updating the label. And one last thing, if we look at the investigate side of things, I can basically query, I can ask if I'm sitting inside of the SOC and I want to know more about a certain domain or a URL or an IP, then I can ask to get more information about it. For example, if I wanted to know about yahoo.com, and it's going to bring back information from the investigate API, like things like risk score and popularity and news information, malware that's been seen from the domain and all the way down to um, things like uh, co-occurrences or related domains. And what you can do from here is if you have configured destination lists, you can then right click and send one of these to that destination list right from here. That destination list can then be um, attached to a secure access uh, rule that will either allow or uh, block access to that destination. So this application uh, exposes all resources available through Secure Access API as well as through Secure Access Dashboard to be like interact exactly from Splunk interface. Am I right? Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of bringing in elements of Secure Access that are relevant to the SOC into uh, into Splunk, which is one of the main tools used by the SOC, if that is their sim, right? Okay. Yeah, I have some. Uh, please let us know if in the comments if you would like to see more about coverage of this plan cap or add on. Yeah, thank you, Yaron. Thanks, Alexei.